Hello everyone. Welcome back once again to this online class. As we were discussing about humidity. In the previous video discussed about the meaning of humidity, relative humidity, absolute humidity and forms of precipitation. In this video you shall learn about types of rainfall. So there are three types of rainfall. The first one is convectional rainfall, the second one is orographic rainfall and third one is cyclonic or frontal rainfall. How does it occur? First of all, discussing about convectional rainfall. Convectional rainfall occurs in the process of convection as already have discussed in insulation what is convection that means the warm air that rises up convectional current so from that process the convectional rainfall is termed so basically for occurring convectional rainfall the surface of the earth should be heated up intense heat should be there as well as the abundance of presence of moisture or water bodies so that when there is intense heat which will cause a lot of evaporation and within the short period of time the cloud forms and followed by condensation and there is occurrence of precipitation or rainfall. So, due to the heating of the surface of the earth, the surface area, the air carries moisture along with them. It rises and above the certain altitude, the air is cooled and there is a formation of rainfall. So, let us see how does it happen. Basically, as we discussed, there are two factors for occurrence of convectional rainfall. First one is the intense heat and the second one is the availability of the water bodies which can transform into moisture and gases form. A lot of evaporation should be there. So, in that way the convectional rainfall is occurring. So, the clouds are of cumulonimbus type which gives heavy rainfall and this convectional rainfall mainly occurs in the equatorial zone because as we already know in the equatorial zone the direct rays of the sun as well as the presence of oceans will be having more evaporation and within short period of time it rains. Now let us see the characteristics of convectional rainfall. First of all this type of rain mostly occur after 4 o'clock that is afternoon. During the daytime due to the intense heat evaporation takes place and afternoon it causes rain that is why it is known as 4 o'clock rainfall or 4 o'clock shower. This type of rainfall is always torrential accompanied by lightning and thundering. So, how does the thundering and lightning occur? when the surface of the earth is heated and above the atmosphere as it is connected with the convectional current. So, sudden decrease and the contact with the warm air and cold air will be forming thundering and lightning. Let us see how does it happen. Thunderstorms can occur whenever 
land surfaces become greatly heated. So thunderstorms are caused by the rapid expansion and contraction of the earth. As we know when the air is heated up, the surface of the land is heated up, the air expands and when it rises to the above atmosphere, it contrasts because of the coolness. So the electrical discharges that is lightning come in contact with the directly on the surface. So that produce intense heat which causes rise to expand and upward creating a low pressure. When there is a low pressure, the surrounding areas of the place, the high pressure winds will be suddenly coming towards the low pressure. So there is a rapid movement of the high pressure wind and the low pressure winds. So due to this fact, the thundering occurs. Now the next one is orographic rainfall. Orographic rainfall means it is raining windward side of the mountains. Right. When moisture laden clouds are abstracted by a mountain and if the clouds having lot of moisture causes rain in the windward side that is called orographic rainfall. An opposite side of the mountain or it is also known as rain shadow area or leeward side will be having little rainfall because most of the moisture that is containing in the clouds will fall in the windward side. So when after falling rainfall the wind or clouds become a bit light and they cross to the other part of the mountain opposite side of the mountain which will be causing bit little rainfall. So the amount of precipitation decrease as the maximum precipitation occurs on windward side. The maximum precipitation will be occurring on the windward side and the leeward side it will decrease because all the moisture or most of the moisture will be shedding towards windward side. Let us take example like in uh, western ghat of India, the southwest monsoon as it hits the western ghat, the windward side of the western ghats will be experiencing heavier rainfall than the places which are located leeward side of western ghat or rain shadow area of western ghat. This type of rainfall is known as orographic rainfall. Basically in India we receive mostly from orographic rainfall. So the characteristics features of orographic rainfall first of all when the moisture laden wind rises along the windward side of the mountain the pressure on it decreases the air expands and cools. So as it carries moisture along with it right so it tries to cross the mountain as the mountains are high they will be rising high and higher so what happens they drastically lose their temperature they become cool and there is a rainfall in that way it is known as orographic rainfall. On the windward side the dry air descends the mountain slopes the pressure decreases. Then for example in India western Ghats, as we discussed western Ghats in the windward side get maximum rainfall from the monsoon season that is southeast monsoon whereas in the leeward side there is rain shadow area receiving very little rainfall. So wherever mountain barriers are there and if that is obstructing the moisture laden clouds will be having this type of rainfall. The last one that is the third type of rainfall is cyclonic or frontal. So this type of rainfall mainly occurs nearby the coastal areas or oceanic areas that means due to the land breeze and sea breeze. So here what happens the frontal means the meeting place of warm air and the cold air that means warm clouds and the cold clouds meet suddenly and that they rise up they cool down and there is a rainfall right. Depression of cyclonic 
rain occurs when a mass of warm air that is also known as warm front mass of bulk of warm air meets the mass of cold air that is cold front the warm air is forced to rise above the cooler air as it is lighter so as it will be rising of the condensation takes place and clouds formed followed by rains so as we know the warm air will be carrying more moisture so when they come face to face they meet the warm air is forcefully rising up and there is the formation of rainfall that is known as cyclonic and frontal rainfall in tropical cyclones the rainfall is very often very heavy but last only for few hours in temperate depressions it is much lighter but last for many days cyclonic rain is common throughout the doldrums where the trade winds meet so this cyclonic rain is mostly when the trade winds south east trade winds and the north east trade winds meet the cyclonic <coughs> rainfall occurs tropical cyclones means the cyclones which occur within the tropic of cancer that is close to the equator 8 degree to 14 degree temperate cyclones means it is beyond tropic of cancer or beyond tropic of capricorn and that last for long days the characteristics features of cyclonic rain is that cyclonic rain is usually in the form of drizzle it occurs when warm fronts meet the cold front it is widespread of long durations when associated with cold fronts it is always in the form of thunder shower for a short duration so as we know when cold front and warm front meet they will be having thunder storms and it lasts for long duration winter rainfall that occurs in northwest part of india that is in punjab haryana and uttar pradesh during the winter season that is the example of cyclonic rainfall or in india it is known as western disturbance that is temperate cyclone because it occurs beyond the tropic of cancer so now the rainfall is distributed due to the following reason the rainfall is not equal everywhere due to certain reason the re amount of rainfall that is received in a particular area or particular place depends upon few factors so let's see what are the factors that depend upon the amount of rainfall that should be uh, affecting the first of all the latitude latitude also depends upon in the equatorial areas it will be having more rainfall than in the tropical areas or tropic of cancer tropic of capricorn it will be a bit less and then moving towards the higher latitudes it will be again less temperature it depends upon the amount of temperature that is experienced in the tropical areas more temperature and a lot of evaporation takes place so it will be obviously having the more rainfall in the equatorial areas moisture amount of moisture that is available or found in oceanic areas are more prone to rainfall then atmospheric disturbances and then we have different chill heating of land and water mainly sudden heating of land and water nearby the coastal areas air mass movement and frontal activity so these are the common factors that is determining the occurrence of rainfall and there are some main factors the principal factors that means main factors that determines the distribution of rainfall in the world the first one is latitude latitude in the sense it is mostly occurring convectional rainfall continents and oceans that is occurring frontal or cyclonic rainfall mountain barriers in that area orographic rainfall will be occurring let's discuss one by one what all things and how does it happen latitude as we have discussed that the cooling of air masses in the rain is the main factor 
responsible for precipitation in the world. Hence, the equatorial belt or doldrums, when they converge with north and south trade winds, they form a lot of rainfall. The latitudinal belt of maximum precipitation is found in the equatorial zone that is between 8 degree north to 8 degree south. Between this area that is from equator to 8 degree north and from equator to 8 degree south. Because of the intense heat, lot of uh, moisture, the maximum precipitation is occurring in this region. The shifting of the trade winds causes winter rainfall in Mediterranean regions in Europe. For example, the trade winds from uh, that blow from northeast to southwest, they shed maximum moisture in the eastern margins of the continents and western margins are left dry during the winter season. Now you would see that in Tamil Nadu or in the winter season, the east coast of India receives rainfall because the northeast monsoon collects moisture from Bay of Bengal and it sheds rainfall in the place of Coromandel coast or in the state of Tamil Nadu. Now let us say continents and oceans how the rainfall takes place. The arrangement of land and water on the earth's surface affects the distribution of precipitation. So as we know the earth is having 71 percentage of water and 29 percentage of land. Only 19 percentage of the earth's total amount of precipitation falls on the land surface remaining 81 percentage on the oceans. So only 19 percentage of the rainfall falls on the earth's surface and rest of that falls 81 percentage is on the ocean itself. Places which are located away from the sea in the interior part receive very less rainfall and the places which are close to the sea will be having more rainfall mainly in the coastal areas. Now the next one is mountain barriers. So mountain barriers also play a very vital role for occurring precipitation. In the world wherever mountains are there and if these mountains are obstructing it will be heating of the mountains and then the windward side of these mountains will be having uh, lots of rainfall. So this were the example of the three types of rainfall as well as the distribution of rainfall how does it affect in different regions of the world. I hope you have understood this concept this chapter so with this I wind up this chapter and any queries any doubt is there please do ask in whatsapp and hope to see you in the next video that we shall discuss about the pollution. Pollution you might be knowing a few points because already we have been studying from lower classes very easy points are there the types of pollution and the impact of pollution and the preventive measures of pollution. Thank you so much. I remain.